Graham, thank you. A very good evening. And the uh, two sets of players just making their way out from the tunnel away to our left-hand side. Manchester United in their red shirts and white shorts. And what an occasion for Granada, whose dignitaries stand away to our left-hand side with the phones out and countering for posterity the moment that their team who remember were playing fourth division football back in the uh, first part of this century have played on English soil a great occasion for them well this is the ladies installment in Manchester United's quest for silverware which is into its fourth year but which could be just six weeks from fruition was this competition the last broader trophy back in May 2017 on a sultry night in the northern suburbs of Stockholm and victory over Ajax seemed to be the foundation for sustained success under Jose Mourinho well that wasn't how it transpired but could it now be the catalyst under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer one step at a time of course but United are overwhelming favourites to be the team celebrating under the ticker tape in Gdansk on May the 26th tonight the next step en route with a significant proportion of this particular job already completed in Andalusia last week that 2-0 first leg win came from performance that was solid rather than spectacular against mid-table opposition for whom a first ever European quarter-final represents enormous success after their fairy tale rise through the divisions but whilst Granada's home record is almost identical to that of United their away form is poor their only league victories on the road have come against bottom six opposition in the league a byproduct of the worst defensive statistics in La Liga but there's a shot to nothing tonight even though United's side is much changed because of suspension and the elimination would be comparable with the biggest shocks in the club's history United line up with De Gea in goal Wan-Bissaka Twanzebi Lindelof and Teja is the back four Matic and Fred then Greenwood, Bruno Fernandes and Pogba and Cavani Granada, Rui Silva in goal, Fouquier, Kaman, Vallejo and Neva Golalon, then Kennedy, Herrera, Montoro and Maquis and Soldado up front referee tonight, Ispan Kovac from Hungary now Dean, Manchester United weren't at their best in Andalusia last week they didn't have to be, it was a, a solid 6 out of 10 performance, nothing more than that, but it was still enough with the aid of that late penalty to get the job done. What do you see from Granada that Manchester United will have been concentrating on ahead of his second leg tonight? Well, I thought when the ball got played in towards their midfield and Manchester United's uh, midfield, Fernandez in particular, they were very, very tight and looked to press in the midfield area. And then once they won it back, very neat and tidy, but without really having that real threat at the top end of the pitch well look I mean Harry Maguire is missing who um, who's the captain and has played all of the games so it's a chance you would say to run a debut that hasn't played much football if you sold Arda with your experience you would try and pull on to him when the ball's wide but it's a big ask a real big ask well the two sets of players assembled and ready for the signal to get the game underway will be Bruno Fernandes that will have the first kick of the night United kicking from left to right and defending the Stretford end and their opponents in the black shirts and black shorts white socks be interesting to see how they approach it so Manchester United 45 90 minutes away from a place in the Europa League semi-final into the last four of Europe again providing providing that there are no undue problems this evening first ball play forward results in a free kick won by Herrera who was lively in that first leg the uh, Venezuelan who's on loan from Manchester City for whom he's yet to play but features in a professional game in Manchester for the first time in his career tonight and he's won this free kick which will be taken about 20 yards outside the Granada penalty area Work back for the goalkeeper Rui Silva, who's in all blue. Game taking place under a cloudless sky. A mild spring evening here in Manchester. As the ball is launched forward, and another free kick is uh, given away. Uh, first set piece opportunity in a position of some promise as far as Granada are concerned. About 15, 18 yards outside the penalty area, and Donna Long has spotted it down. It's going to be Montoro who will stand over it after the uh, foul from Twanzebi, who's had his arms uh, all round Roberto Soldado. And this moment of early concern as far as Manchester United are concerned. Montoro working it wide out towards the right flank. Kennedy with a little give and go. Montoro sweeping it in, but Lindelof's there to volley it away on the edge of the penalty area. And Manchester United now on the counter-attack potentially can bring it away. Greenwood, good 
maintenance of uh, possession for a moment, but then lost out. And sticking his foot in, it's uh, Kennedy that's won it back towards the edge of the penalty area. He will try and find a way through. Good strength from him. Ball chipped inside the area. Lindelof heads it away. And Alex Tez can get it further clear. Bruno Fernandes killing it on the edge of his own penalty area. And United eventually manages to whack it to safety. But a slightly nervous start. Granada coming out on the front foot with a couple of minutes gone, Dean Ash, and they mean business. Yeah, they have to, and that's what you'd want to see, I think, if you're a Granada supporter, then it would be to press as soon as that ball goes in to any of the attackers, get right on top of them. Greenwood just delayed playing that ball, got intercepted, and then Kennedy, lovely bit of skill on that right-hand side, and didn't fancy his right foot cross, he did a little Rabona left foot cross. Confidence. Bruno Fernandes playing it back for Greenwood and Greenwood finds Twan Zebi square across the edge of his own penalty area to Lindelof into the feet of Paul Pogba who has started off on that left hand side as uh, we expected but just given a little bit more license for drop into spaces than Mason Greenwood who will hold the width on the United right Lindelof five yards inside his own half Played four towards Bruno Fernandes, able to take the ball in a pocket of space. A little give and go with Edison Cavani. Back it comes for Fred, who scored only his second Premier League goal for Manchester United at the weekend. That work by Matic down towards Teas. Coming in off that left flank, Paul Pogba. Gone along, showing his uh, compatriot inside. And it's worked past it by Teas for the uh, run that he makes, but... Fouquier is there to block the cross and it goes out of play for a Manchester United throw which will be taken level with the edge of the Granada penalty area three and a half minutes gone on TalkSport 2 nil nil two nil to Manchester United on aggregate Bruno Fernandes let him fly from the edge of the area took a deflection and the goalkeeper's done really well threw himself to his uh, left hand side and just made sure that the deflection didn't carry the errant shot over the line and out of play for a corner nil nil Paul Pogba just keeps picking up lovely little positions just out of reach of the, uh, of the right back for Granada and out of the reach of the midfield players. Lovely little ball down the side though for Machish. That was never that found him and his ball inside the penalty area is knocked away easily enough by Lindelof. Wan-Bissaka finds Matic, Matic former finalist in this competition, four towards Bruno Fernandes, Cavani trying to roll it in towards Greenwood but just couldn't quite get the angle right and the goalkeeper patrolling his penalty here has had a very good start Rui Silva and off his line quickly enough to be able to make a diving save near the edge of the box to stop Greenwood being able to get onto oh, it but that was better oh, for United it's, it's a great opportunity it really is I have to say it's, a, it's as simple as it gets really from Cavani's point of view just has to get the right amount of spin on the ball away from the defender and away from the goalkeeper it's a pretty simple pass into Greenwood who would have been three and one v one with the goalkeeper and it was a bit I thought it was a bit lazy from Cavani in terms of the quality of it and the uh, the accuracy straight into Rui Silva's hands but that just throw, shows the threat if Granada are going to press once Manchester United pass their way through that press they're so dangerous on the counter-attack Matic Goes wide towards the left-hand side for Teas, who will uh, just take a couple of steps in off the left-hand touchline. Plays it back for Nemanja Matic again. And out of Fred, looking around the corner for Pogba. Wambisaka in space on the right-hand side. Pogba's played it into him now. First time ball back from Wambisaka. Came outside the penalty here. Was flicked away by Gonoron. Out as far as Matic into the feet of Bruno Fernandes. <laughs> Excuse me, Pogba heading it on. Cavani with a left footy shot into the bottom right hand corner. And Manchester United take a six minute lead. Ball played forward, worked out towards Edison Cavani after Pogba's intelligent touch. And Cavani drills it into the bottom right hand corner. And a 2 0 aggregate lead very, be quick, very quickly becomes a 3 0 aggregate lead. And Manchester United all but home and host already. That is deadly from Edison Cavani. Clinical. Once that ball dropped, it was a difficult skill. They always are when they drop, especially on your weak weak foot, to then volley it. It was a wonderful little ball, I thought, from Teyes. Just to clip that, not whip it in, just to clip it into an area inside the box that Paul Pogba made an intelligent run just away from the centre-backs. He saw Cavani, little backwards header from Pogba into the space for Cavani. And as it dropped, on his weaker left foot, he just watched it the whole way. You have to keep it down. 
against the turf and into the back of the net. Quality finish. Just sweeping it in for his 50th goal in European football in his career. 50 in 87 games. Excellent milestone for Cavani. It's his ninth goal of the season. And Manchester United lead by a goal to nil. 3 nil up on aggregate. Well, Granada in a position that they need to score three. We already know it's not going to be going to extra time. Well, Granada score three from here, they'll deserve to go through. I Certainly think would. I think if you were one of those young players on the Manchester United bench, you'd be up and warming up every ten minutes. Right, shaking ahead from Diego Martinez, the uh, Granada coach. The side have won a corner, which will be taken over on the uh, right flank. Seven gone, one nil to Manchester United. In comes the corner, it's headed down and just a fraction wide. It was well met by Herrera. And David De Gea just took a cursory glance to his left because I think he essentially wasn't getting there. Might have done better, Herrera. It's only about eight or nine yards out. And it went just a couple of feet wide and De Gea had it been on target. Might have been struggling. Sloppy, very sloppy defending. Mason Greenwood doesn't just make sure that he's got an eye on who's on the edge of the box. That's his job to make sure he's watching any player that's making a late run into the box, which is what Herrera did. Was free to get the header down. De Gea just let it go. Just a yard wide a real opportunity and we remember from the first leg the amount of set plays and different styles they use for that work very well in the first leg this Fulkier bringing it forward now for Granada but Lindelof is there to lock it away and Herrera drives one in from the edge of the box as it just came down to the edge of the penalty area it didn't clear the bar by too much but David De Gea definitely had that one covered so it was struck sweetly right footed but just got his foot underneath it the Venezuelan a couple of sights of goal already in the couple of minutes since Manchester United took the lead. Edison Cavani's six-minute goal, the difference between the two sides. And you're listening to Manchester United against Granada in the Europa League. It's live on TalkSport 2 with Music Magpie, the UK's number one phone recycler. Get cash for your tech the smart way. Nil-nil in the Arsenal game. 1-1 one, one, the aggregate scoreline. And still nil-nil in the other two uh, Europa League quarterfinals tonight as well between Roma and Ajax the winners of that one meet seemingly Manchester United but the winners of this tie the first leg will be at home so at Granada or here at Old Trafford in a couple of weeks time it's 2-1 to Roma on aggregate with the two away goals to their name so far here's Kennedy on loan from Chelsea and started on the left in the first leg but playing on the right hand side tonight and then driving through the midfield he's been brought down it's a free kick which will be taken by the Granada about five or six yards inside the Manchester United half first leg was sport in some ways as well by a very heavy-handed uh, display of officialdom from Arthur Diaz the Portuguese referee which is why the likes of Shaw and Maguire and McTominay are all missing tonight ball swept inside the penalty area here is headed away by Victor Lindelof Herrera tried to turn him and Lindelof stood firm he goes out of play for another corner uh, Lindelof incidentally making the 300th appearance of his career tonight is the one man in the starting lineup uh, for Manchester United or one of two should I say along with uh, Nemanja Matic who will miss the first leg of the semi-final through suspension if they're booked tonight but after tonight's games all the yellow cards get wiped off but Lindelof and Matic walking the yellow card tightrope there are several in the Granada side who are doing likewise another corner 10 minutes gone 1-0 to Manchester United left footed in towards the near post and very well turned away by Bruno Fernandes off balance Put back in then a high deep ball just too far away from her man who has given David De Gea a shove and the ball knocked out of his hands it will be a free kick which Manchester United Spanish goalkeeper will take. 1-0 Manchester United leading Granada, and these are the thoughts of the former England striker Dean Ashton. Well, I think the first quarter of the game has already shown exactly what these team, T2 teams have in this quarter-final, and that's plenty of endeavour from Granada, looking to try and cause Manchester United problems, but without the quality. And then Manchester United, again, not having to be at their best, but then when they get their opportunities, big clinical, and that's the difference. You know, there's no real comparison between Cavani and Soldado. And given the opportunities, it's going to be Cavani that, that takes them more often than Roberto. And Cavani has uh, just won a free kick. He was 
push by Herman, who came on as a sub early in the second half last week and starts tonight. The 34 uh, year old, the Granada skipper, didn't make his top flight debut until he was 32. And now playing in a European quarter final that he must have thought would never come his way. Big night for him. Cavani sweeping it forward, looking for Greenwood. Picked up by the left back, never for Granada. Back to his goalkeeper. Rui Silva, the uh, Portuguese, clears. Twan Zebi comes to meet it on halfway. Popper chipping it back over the top. Greenwood, though, thought he was in an offside position and was probably right. Didn't make the run for it. And it drifts through to the Granada goalkeeper. 1-0 Manchester United lead with Edison Cavani's goal. Five and a half minutes in. Game in the championship tonight. Big one in the uh, bottom four as well. Still nil-nil between Rotherham and Coventry there. Eight minutes into the second half of that seven o'clock kickoff. Lindelof playing it forward. And it looked as though it was a good handball shot against Herrera. It was, it was drilled forward and hit the Venezuelan, but the referee allowed play to go on. Now he'll stop it as Fred is uh, brought down. About uh, ten yards inside the Manchester United half. United who've won one half of their home games of this season have been beaten here six times though in all competitions over the course of the uh, campaign by Spurs and Arsenal Palace and Sheffield United in the Premier League by Manchester City in the League Cup by PSG as well in in Europe Granada on the other hand with a very poor away record in the league where all three wins that they've had have come against sides uh, in the bottom six but the last of those coming at the weekend away to Valladolid and they're on the front foot now with Marquis and towards Kennedy right hand side of the penalty area the Brazilian turning neatly Fouquier offering the support for him Fouquier the full back in his second spell with the club driving forward hoping for the return ball from Montoro which wasn't forthcoming United can bring it away another little clever trip from Bruno Fernandes to open it up for Cavani he goes to his left for Pogba who's very quickly surrounded by four in black shirt one of them gone along just running into Pogba's lost possession and that will give Manchester United the opportunity to bring it forward gone along stayed down injured Cavani chipping it wide for Juan Bissaka the referee has spotted that gone along is down hurt but he can see it's not a head injury and only now do United turn the ball out of play so that he can receive whatever treatment is necessary and a big goal coming in elsewhere as Arsenal take the lead away to Slavia Prague Edel Smith Rowe with the goal on 14 minutes Arsenal 2-1 up on aggregate hoping that they'll be able to hold the lead this week as they couldn't a week ago Manchester United the goal up as well so as things stand it will be Manchester United against Roma and Arsenal against Villarreal in the semi-finals but a lot of water's got to go under the bridge yet 15 minutes gone in this one got Alonso okay, Cage back on his feet and Manchester United 3-0 up on aggregate Dean yeah and I think they're playing like it now just nice and relaxed trying to keep possession the only threat really is if they give the ball away which they did moments ago and it was just the decision making again wasn't sharp enough from Granada they had a chance just to play Soldado straight in 1v1 and instead took that extra touch the chance was gone and then Manchester United can be a threat again on the break and Fred chipping it forward it was a good run from Greenwood but the goalkeeper starting position excellent again a long way outside his penalty area to be able to play a sweeper keeper and get it clear and you feel that United have only got to get that ball right once and they'll work it forward again Greenwood making another run and long diagonal to try and find him Never the left back shuffling across to knock it away finds McKees. McKees will chip it over the top of Wan Bissaka and Never, who's pretty pacey, will take him on. Well, Wan Bissaka, so seldom beaten in that kind of situation, does well. Times his sliding chase to perfection and is able to knock it away. I, almost, I can't believe how many good ball that and lead by Fernandez, but I cannot believe how often Wan Bissaka goes to ground. The thing that you would be taught as a as a, as a young defender is stay on your feet you know don't commit yourself but he's so good at it it's so rare that actually he gives a free kick away or gets yellow carded for the the timing of the tackle it's just a real art that he's got one of the best I've, I've ever seen if I'm honest and looks like he revels in it as soon as that went down the line there you could just see he was winding up winding up waiting for his opportunity and because of uh, because of his timing and the stretch of his of his leg brilliantly won the ball well, that Arsenal goal has been disallowed by the VAR and it's taken them two and a half minutes to have a look at it and make the decision that there was an offside and as a consequence it's still nil-nil in that game. Now Pogba driving forward here. What? 
has uh, had a, a yellow card go against him. It looked as though he might have been the player that was fouled initially, uh, but for a flailing arm, a yellow card is shown to Paul Pogba. That's bizarre. Honestly, I thought it was absolutely brilliant play from Paul Pogba. Really aggressive in the way that he won the ball, got past one player, got past the other, you know, shoves his, shoves his forearm across to say, no way are you getting this ball, I'm going to surge forwards. Okay, he's a tall man and it's his elbow went across but it was nothing other than just a forearm across to say you're not getting the ball and he's been given a yellow card for it i thought i was gonna have a go at the referee because i thought you gotta let that play on i thought paul pogba had been fouled well he looks utterly mystified and that wasn't a a, a player with uh, deliberately looking to try and question a decision he really seriously didn't know what he'd done wrong there but he's got the game's first yellow card and Pogba is cautioned. Seventh yellow card of the season for a man who scored the opener in the final when Manchester United were last there. Here's Maquise trying his luck. Comes down towards this left flank when Never will run it out of play. Let it run out of play after it, the shot had taken a deflection off the United player. And it's a throw which will be taken by the men in black shirts about 10 yards or so from the corner flag. Carlos Never started the first leg his only appearance in the last seven weeks starts again today back for McKeese his cross blocked and looped up in the air by Bruno Fernandes and there's come off Cavani under a little bit of pressure from Vallejo and out for a throw which will be taken on the Granada left hand side Manchester United leading by a golden hill might beginning to fall here in Manchester be a can't see it from here but it will be a glorious sunset in the uh, immediate environs and as things stand at the moment the sun's setting on Granada's maiden European campaign but they've done fantastically and beat Bill Bow on the final day last season have finished seventh qualified for Europe for the first time it'll be hard push to be playing European football again next year they're currently ninth in La Liga they've had more away wins in this competition than they have had in the league over the course of the season Got the work cut out here, trailing to that Edison Cavani goal. Jim Proudford and Dean Ashton talking through the action here on TalkSport 2, where another sliding challenge comes in that the uh, referee might take exception to, and it was uh, Pogba, was the perpetrator of it, just sliding to try and gain possession back, and the referee is in danger of losing control of this. He was surrounded very quickly by four Granada players and produces a yellow card not for Pogba, which will be his second of the game, but I think for Soldado. You could argue that that challenge, much worse than the one that he got put for. <laughs> Absolutely, from behind, looking to hook the ball, mistimed. Paul Herrera to the floor on the counter-attack, and Soldado was infuriated. And rightly so, though, yellow carded, the way he acted towards the referee, very, very poor. So Soldado booked for descent, Pogba, fortunate, but he wasn't given the second yellow card there for the challenge. And a free kick which will be taken by Granada. Manchester United in such complete control. They don't need the red mist to descend. 20 minutes in. In comes the free kick from Montoro and a flying diving header goes wide. It was a great chance for Herrera. The ball was curved inside the penalty area. Another excellent set piece delivery. It's about seven or eight yards out. Diving header from a central position, but he's put it wide of the right hand post. Well, I'm sorry, he's made exactly the same run. He's come from deep and ran straight between the uh, the Manchester United back line between Pogba and Lindelof. Weren't expecting it. Free header, penalty spot, no pressure whatsoever, and puts it wide. What a chance. It's now Slavia Prague nil. Arsenal 2 and having had that goal disallowed they've then scored almost immediately with Nicola Pepe and a Lacazette penalty has doubled the lead so two goals in two and a half minutes for Arsenal who lead 2-0 and 3-1 on aggregate and in great position with those two away goals to make it through to face either Villarreal or Dinamo Zagreb in the semi-finals Manchester United in control of this one Arsenal in control of that one good night for the English clubs at the moment here's Vallejo the mop of dark hair the one-time Wolves defender playing for by Never just loses out to Fred who uh, did well to dispossess him and then Fred rides the challenge which comes in from Montoro 
clever quick feet again from Greenwood and the referee spotted an infringement which gives Manchester United a free kick on halfway. Manchester United 1, Granada 0 and we're just coming up to the midway stage of the first half here on TalkSport 2 as Tez makes his way forward that's deflected high in the air of Fulquier and Cavani leaning into her man has given the free kick away you're listening to Manchester United against Granada in the Europa League it's live on TalkSport 2 with McDonald's McDelivery order McDelivery now and get McDonald's delivered straight to your doorstep 1-0 to Manchester United every single time Tez gets it on that left hand side I can see I keep watching Cavani's movement he is a nightmare for defenders in terms of whenever he's looking to run into the box he makes sure he gets himself in a position where the defender or the first defender can't see him so he's basically looking at the back of the defender's shirt so the defender's constantly having to either swivel his head or switches off and allows Cavani to either dart in front of him or in behind him and Tears is looking to whip that cross in at the earliest opportunity. Here's Paul Pogba corner of the penalty area for Manchester United pulling it back for Nemanja Matic. Matic rolling it down the left-hand side of the area. Appeals for an offside flag which now comes up against Alex Tears after he had his uh, first cross blocked. It came back to him but he was in an offside position when he first received the ball and it's a free kick which will be taken by Granada in their right back position 0-0 between Rotherham and Coventry in the championship goalless Roma against Ajax winners of that play the winners of this one Villarreal against Dinamo Zagreb similarly 0-0 the winners of that uh, playing the winners of Slavia Prague against Arsenal the Gunners 2-0 up away from home in that one Manchester United winning this one by a golden nil on TalkSport 2 and the live football continues for you over the course of the weekend starting tomorrow night from the championship here on TalkSport 2 Reading against Cardiff which is a 6 o'clock kickoff. I'm down in the chair for that one tomorrow night I'll give you the details of what's coming up in game day live over the course of the weekend in a few moments time Granada working the ball forward here and the flag is up again it's just rolled over the line and had a play for a throw signalled by the assistant referee over on the far touch line all Hungarian officials tonight Cavani from the quickly taken throw with a poor touch which has got Granada going again they try and work it forward towards Soldado Cavani takes it down on his chest Pogba then is dispossessed by Herrera but United win it back over on the far side of the midfield and they can just play it forward once more down the right hand side Arsenal three up now three goals in seven minutes wow. Bayo Saka getting the third of those and that is all but job done got to concede four from here to go out Manchester United similarly handily placed Tejas 24 minutes gone Manchester United leading by a golden hill that Arsenal game incidentally life you right now over on TalkSport with Alex Crook and Matt Holland and if you download the TalkSport app which I'm sure you've already done you can just swipe seamlessly left and right between the two games to keep abreast of all the significant action as it happens tonight Pogba losing out in the midfield slightly challenge comes in from Fred but he can't win it back Rara tries to play it forward it's easily cut out by Matic and then Kennedy just sees it nicked off his toes by Bruno Fernandes one back though by Gonalon and Gonalon's done well a little nutmeg of Cavani which is appreciated by the Granada staff Kennedy then trying to pirouette and just trying to overplay it lost out to Pogba will be able to bring it away he's still inside his own half but he can flick it forward towards Fred with the familiar sweatbands around his wrists Fred with a little one-two with Bruno Fernandes now plays in Harold Wambisaka right in front of us from him to Greenwood back for Fred now to Matic inside the centre circle 1-0 to Manchester United with Bruno Fernandes playing it forward towards Greenwood on the right-hand side of the penalty area he's laid it back for Aaron Wambisaka Wambisaka drawing the challenge the first one which came in comes back towards Matic straight ball four from him Pogba to Cavani but couldn't supply the return ball and Vallejo digs it clear Lindelof on halfway does well plays it back out towards Tejas high left but he cross in from him Bruno Fernandes chasing goalkeeper again has done well because he came out and met it at York length but was able to get good solid hands behind it and avoid spilling it into the feet of the onrushing Bruno Fernandes we played 26 minutes on TalkSport 2 and Manchester United good value for the 1-0 lead yeah absolutely look very very comfortable they've given the ball away quite a few times I have to say but Granada haven't got the quality to pierce that back line and 
it's become almost training pace I would say when Manchester United have possession almost walking pace just looking to then break down this Granada defence looking to play cleverly through the middle if not try and get it wide to to Teas to whip that in from the left hand side but it's pretty slow and comfortable and got that feel of job done already United with an excellent home record in this competition unbeaten in the last 16 here at Old Trafford and we don't need to score three to knock them out the last time United even conceded two in a Europa League tie here was back in 2013 when they were beaten by Athletic Bilbao very comfortable this situation that they find themselves in we only need three to knock them out Slavia Prague need four to knock out Arsenal and it seems already almost certain that we're going to have two European finalists in the Champions League and two in the Europa League from England Haman able to bring the ball forward and Haman works it into the feet of Herrera who then stabs it to his right hand side straight to Pogba and there was a body check off the ball which left Pogba on the deck he didn't react to his credit Bruno Fernandes brings it forward lay that towards Alex Tejas on the Manchester United left Pogba's back on his feet and in a position to receive the pass he finds Matic now Fred to Juan Bissaka Greenwood making an intelligent run down the right hand touch line Matic chases him but Greenwood's there first wins the battle of the two number 11s lays it back for Juan Bissaka Fred Matic Pogba Lindelof and the Swede plays it out towards the left hand touchline for Alex Tejas good movement off the ball from Paul Pogba Pogba just trying to work it one stop further down the line hits Kennedy uh, with the pass and it goes out of play for a throw that Manchester United will take about 10 yards from the Granada corner flag 1-0 when you're in a position like this as, as players whether it's like this in a second leg and you feel like you're in a, such a commanding position or you're in a game and you're 3-0, 4-0 up with 20, 30 minutes to go honestly it's really hard mentally to really get yourself into it to maybe overexert yourself knowing you've got more games to come when this is done it's more a case of just being professional having a few touches the only really player would be your centre forward because he's desperate to score like I was you know every game is sort of seen as and it would annoy you I think sometimes as a forward when that game's gone but you know there's goals there and chances because of the opposition but the team's just playing nice nice uh, possession play just to see out the tie and you can't blame them you can't blame them with the fixture list they've had I suppose to that end that's where your rotation comes in because you talk about the striker having the motivation to score goals but the likes of of Donny van der Beek yeah, or, yeah. or the youngsters you know if we see an Elanga or a Shuratiri or, or Ahmad they certainly will have the motivation because it is a rare opportunity for them yeah fantastic point exactly so I'd like to see some changes at half time from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and give the team a little bit of a lift because like you say because of the players on the bench that will be desperate to impress and maybe give a bit more energy into this performance whereas as of now the players are on the pitch trying to conserve themselves don't do anything silly don't get injured keep the ball keep possession show your quality on on the ball and see this game out United coasting but still in complete control Modern nil Colton Shoe one at the New York Stadium which is a massive goal in the relegation battle at the bottom of the championship with the side fourth bottom of the table taking the lead away to the side third bottom and it's Ostigard the uh, defender on loan from Brighton who has scored that goal and if he stays that way Coventry will go up three places and out of the bottom six Rotherham would find themselves four points adrift of Derby with two games in hand now a problem here for Gonalon who has uh, been in the wars in the last six seven minutes or so and it looks as though his race is run and he's going to be replaced by Molina just down receiving treatment at the moment Maxime Gonalon who's been a, a key part of uh, Granada's success former Leon and Roma man about to be replaced by a striker so he's a defensive midfielder off and a striker on even at this stage of the game the 38 year old veteran Jorge Molina scored 77 goals for Betis 47 for Catafe and has got three of his 
12 for Granada this season in the Europa League, including one away to PSV Eindhoven. And he is on. And is he going to play as a 10? With Montoro just they're dropping slightly deeper alongside Herrera. That, I would imagine, will be how they'll shuffle things around. Manchester United leading Granada by a golden nil. And we've got 14 minutes to half time. Dean Ashton. Got to say, I love this. 37-year-old Dean Ashton watching 38-year-old Molina. I know how I feel physically. <laughs> I, hope, I hope he feels better than me. Well, he might at the moment. <laughs> he might not at 10 o'clock. Uh, the ball is uh, laid out to the left-hand side. Unfortunately, some of us, that kind of luxury of commentating on players who are older than you is long since past. <laughs> uh, the ball is uh, played down through the uh, midfield towards Twan Zebi. Now to Juan Bissaka. Wait till you're commentating on players who are much younger than your children. <laughs> and you'll know how I feel. The ball is worked forward now towards Molina. Uh, the aforementioned veteran flicking it forward. It's uh, deflected through for Soldado. That really was a something or nothing ball back to him. And uh, it will be uh, mopped up at the back by Juan Bissaka. Didn't have the legs to get out of play for a goal kick. So he's just played his way out from the back to start Manchester United going again. Well, what they've lacked is any real quality. And he scored at the weekend it's been one of their main threats all season and you'd like to think if they can turn over possession which they've done quite a few times already this evening can himself and Soldado combine and at the very least put a real threat to this Manchester United back line Pogba finds spread Bruno Fernandes 10 yards outside the penalty area under the feet of Mason Greenwood Greenwood back for Wan-Bissaka now we're forward towards Mason Greenwood again, coming in off the right flank in his uh, blue boots, finding the Mania Matic, left footed ball clipped over the top, Bruno Fernandes! Oh, it would have been a picture book goal, he's volleyed it over the bar, but it was a great move, great approach play, very easy on the eye, albeit relatively slow, and then one quick sudden ball fall from Matic, and Fernandes onto it like a flash, and he hit a corkscrew volley with the top of his right foot, the direction perfect, the elevation just not quite. No, it was just set up perfectly, wasn't it, for him. There was no way he was going to take this down. It was the perfect height, the pass from Matic over the top. He was on the last line of defence, Fernandez, which is not really where he's been in recent weeks, getting beyond the, the striker. But when it fell onto that right foot with the angle that we've got just uh, above the dugouts, you could just see what he wanted to do, side volley that into the top corner. He was a couple of feet over the top. Here's Makis at the other end, wan standing firm, edge of the penalty area, Greenwood back in defensive duty, uh, he and Soldado, I think, caught each other, no complaints for either of them, play goes on with Montoro's long diagonal, good switch of play for Fulquier, and the right back to Molina on the turn, and Topo back towards David De Gea, who just got his left foot through it to get it away for Manchester United, he's still not had a significant save to make tonight, had that one early chance with the diagonal, header that went wide Paul Pogba bringing it forward effortlessly through the midfield and uh, a good run good approach play not such a good ball but you know they've won it back and then Greenwood making good strides down the right flank forces Vallejo to come out from the middle and slide it out of play for a throw that will be taken by Manchester United's Aaron Wan-Bissaka and he's taking it quickly finding Fred Fred thinking about a shot and uh, might wish that he'd had a decent one because he's pulled that one a long way wide well I know he scored from two yards out at the weekend but that's more like what we've seen from him this season in attacking sense shooting from outside the area been pretty poor but that bit of play before that goes unnoticed too often for me Fred the way he wins the ball back the way he spots danger and intercepts the amount of times he does that is the reason why he plays so often with McTominay if you've got the flair and the pace on the break you need someone like Fred and McTominay to play that role and spot danger he does such a good job in there and he doesn't get anywhere near the amount of credit for winning the ball back for Manchester United Montoro has it now for Granada Lays it back for her man. Now from him to his left-hand side for Jesus Vallejo. He played in a Champions League quarter-final for Real Madrid three years ago. He lost the Juventus on the night. They still qualified, though. There hasn't been too much experience from this Granada team deep in European competition before. All pretty much in uncharted waters, with the exception of Gonalon, who's off injured and 
and also Vallejo and Soldado notably who's had a, a good run in this competition reached the semi-finals of this competition when he was the UEFA Cup when he was an Osasuna player and also with Valencia and Villarreal in the uh, Europa League but seemingly he's going to be unable to make it four semi-finals in this competition with four different sides crossfield ball is uh, a poor one from Montoro seized upon by Pogba right towards the edge of the penalty area Cavani couldn't feather it into the path of uh, Matic who made a run outside him and Granada will be able to bring it away Fulquier and Paul touch from Maquise trying to be doing well to read it Pogba in there strongly and fairly and then he ends up on the deck again after a, a coming together I think with Kennedy over on the right hand side and then it's Granada bring it forward free kick is given Manchester United's way and the referee will go across and see what's going on between Kennedy and Pogba with the Frenchman lying on the deck Kennedy leaning over him uh, I think to make sure he's okay in fairness it's his knee that he's holding Paul Pogba just having a look at a replay here Dean which uh, might suggest how he hurt it seemingly just a collision bang knee on knee yeah. with uh, Kennedy so yeah, it should be okay the knee on knee is horrible honestly it's like catching your funny bone on your elbow it's just a horrible feeling when you clash knees like that sometimes it feels like you've genuinely suddenly done something to your knee and then once it wears off it, it's okay and he's up and up and running well Arsenal racing into a 3-0 lead away to Slavia Prague and it does seem as though they're going to be playing Unai Emery's Villarreal who are 1-0 up on the night Paco Alcacer has given them a 1-0 lead this evening a 2-0 lead on aggregate against Dinamo Zagreb ball headed down towards the edge of the penalty area for United Fernandez as Cavani just guided it into his path snatched his shot and pulled it across the face of goal and wide out of play for a goal kick seven to go to half time Manchester United 1 Granada nil. following all of this evening's football the only place you can have your say on national radio is the sports bar and the goal scene of Jason Cundy over on TalkSport Monday to Thursday from 10 o'clock rounding up the night's action and then sports day is back tomorrow morning here on two at five as Paul Coy brings you your essential roundup of the morning's top sports stories and over on talk sport from six tomorrow morning the sports breakfast with Alan Brazil Travis Sinclair and Ray Parler one nil Manchester United leading Granada three nil on aggregate and it has to be said it doesn't feel as though there's a great degree of jeopardy about this for Manchester United with the way things are at the moment no I mean I think even with supporters in the stadium this evening that it would be pretty flat now because of the way the game's gone how comfortable Manchester United are and the speed in which they're they're playing at and I talked about the mentality of being in this position but you've still got to be switched on Marquis finding Never who'd uh, got past Juan Bissaka and guess who was there Fred yeah exactly so many things that go unnoticed because people think well he's Brazilian we were expecting pure flair and you know passes forward and bits of trickery well actually the work that goes unnoticed that's so important the reason why he gets picked for every big game is the role that he just played then and what a pass Pogba's just played for Greenwood who's touched a little bit heavy under pressure from Vallejo and Germán had to come across and put it out of play for a throw uh, but that was just a sublime ball from Pogba who took it on the half turn and spun it first time with the instep of his right boot perfectly over the top of the defender for the run of Mason Greenwood it's a Manchester United throw and it's going to be taken by Aaron Wan-Bissaka level with the edge of the penalty area five to go to half time here on Talk Sport 2 Jim Proudfoot and Dean Ashton talking through the action from Old Trafford it's Wan-Bissaka controlling it on the right flank lays it back for Bruno Fernandes now to Nemanja Matic Pogba receiving the ball but it's uh, bounced off him a little bit Kennedy trying to take it on away from his one time Chelsea teammate Matic now finds Soldado Soldado dropping much deeper on halfway former Spurs man wearing nine sends an aerial ball out towards Fulquier Dimitri Fulquier taking it on and then out towards the touchline Pogba and Bruno Fernandes are both over there they want it back between them Matic lays it back cleared by Teas Cavani beaten in the air by a man and Cavani stayed down her play goes on and Pogba will pick up the ball and put it out of play so his teammate can receive whatever treatment is necessary it's just a bang in the small of the back I think for Cavani it was just perfectly set up for her man 
just to think I can win this header and I can also jam my forearm into Cavani's back. Two for the price of one. Brilliant from, from the defender. It is because that's what you want. You want as a centre forward. I always used to hate the thought of you know when you're going up for a header if you've got a defender that's happy just to barge into the back of you elbow knee and Cavani just got up little look at her man okay like that is it yeah it was a free shot wasn't it two vastly experienced 34 year olds doing battle against each other it's rare now though isn't it that you get the opportunity as a defender to leave a little bit on a forward without it necessarily being noticed Villarreal have doubled their lead 2-0 up against Dinamo Zagreb 3-0 up on aggregate so they two surely are going through here's Juan Bissaka on the right hand side for Manchester United crossfield ball was a little bit chancy he's picked up by Kennedy's a long way out and David De Gea doesn't even pay that lip service as it spirals wide and goes out much closer to the corner flag than his goal goal kick which will be taken by Manchester United Spanish goalkeeper clean sheet still against his name which will be his 12th of the season and United very good value and complete control here leading Granada by a goal to nil and 3-0 on aggregate and coming up over the course of the weekend for you game day live returning on Saturday Newcastle against West Ham fourth bottom against fourth top a big game of both ends of the table with uh, Rashman in the chair and Nigel Adderley and Danny Mills at St James's Park Chelsea against Manchester City in the FA Cup semi-final from 5.30 and then Wolves against Sheffield United at Molyneux at 8.15 and that's on Talk Sport and on Talk Sport 2 Luton Watford and Norwich Bournemouth the Canaries surely will get themselves uh, promoted this weekend Back to the here and now, Bruno Fernandes, finding Arouan Bissaka, we've got a couple of minutes to go to half-time, bit of stoppage time to be added on, Fred will play it in, it's uh, knocked away, Molina try to hold it up, back it comes for Maquise on the left-hand touchline, will try and spin away from Juan Bissaka, who timed his chance to perfection, Bruno Fernandes, the recipient, finds Greenwood, who cut across it and sends it spiralling wide with the outside of his left boot, always going wide and then wider of Rui Silva's goal United leading Granada by a goal to nil 90 seconds from half time well the viper the cobra foot when Pazaka was at it again there had no right really to win that ball timed it perfectly from behind without fouling Maquise fell to Greenwood who lined it up perfectly and he'll be disappointed actually with that it was a good 10 yards wide I would say considering there was no pressure on him on his left foot He's had a good return to goal scoring form, good return to form in general. Three goals in his last four games and scored in each of the last two Premier League matches and had a goal and an assist at Spurs at the weekend. Seven goals uh, over the course of the season. His next will be his 25th for Manchester United in all competitions. He might get the opportunity to get it now as Pogba plays it for for Alex Tejas down the left-hand side and Greenwood lurking unmarked on the edge of the penalty area but Granada get it away with Fulquier. Lindelof then comes to meet the second ball Cavani with a clever little defensive header flicked back by Pogba to the edge of the area Bruno Fernandes chipping it for Greenwood knew he was offside he couldn't go for it Cavani couldn't get there on time and he goes innocuously out of play for a goal kick too unselfish from Paul Pogba I would say there lovely little flick header from Cavani just inside Paul Pogba getting himself into the box no real pressure we know what ability he's got 1v1 why not go and take on Montoro and get his shot away instead look for a bit more of a clever pass and maybe that just sums up Manchester United trying to do the, the difficult thing rather than simply which you would normally do well if this was a Premier League game I, I think there would probably be three minutes to be added on at the end of the first half but being as we're in Europe tonight it's just the one and Matic will head it forward through the midfield Fred turning it on towards Cavani one back by Kaman right footed four from the Granada captain and easily knocked away by Tejas and then Cavani was uh, caught uh, by Kennedy and it's a free kick which Manchester United will take and uh, they'll be able to run the clock down uh, from here Alex Tejas with the free kick might have the uh, last touch of the first half and so far so good as far as Manchester United are concerned I don't think there was any level of concern coming into the game on the back of the first leg last week but 
and he worries that they were alleviated by the early goal from Edison Cavani just five and a half minutes in and Manchester United have been in complete control ever since half time whistle goes and they're 45 minutes away from a place in the Europa League semi-final Cavani's goal Manchester United won Granada nil it's 3-0 on aggregate on TalkSport 2 uh, yeah, only the one change for United, which is Van der Beek for Pogba, which is uh, the one that we were speculating about with Paul Pogba having picked up the, the yellow card. And two further changes being made by Granada. Kennedy hasn't reappeared and neither has Soldado. And they've been replaced by Suarez and Puertas. So a double change for Granada. And the one for Manchester United sees uh, Donny van der Beek come on for Paul Pogba and it's a big 45 minutes ahead for him, D. It is. I think any time he takes the field, it, it probably feels to him like he's he's on trial um, to, to get more minutes. I think he'll actually probably play behind Cavani, and Fernandez will come out to this left-hand side. Well, we're back underway for the uh, second half. Manchester United red shirts, white shorts and black socks. And they're kicking from right to left, attacking the Stratford end. And Granada, who uh, attacked the old scoreboard end of the ground, need three without reply to go through. It won't be extra time tonight. The ball is worked for down the Granada left-hand side, and straight away Suarez, the striker who's had a lengthy spell out through injury recently, but made his comeback as a substitute in the first leg last week. Chases after it, but it's easily mopped up by the United back line. Manchester United lining up with De Gea in goal. Wan-Bissaka, Twanzebi, Lindelof and Teyers the back four. Matic and Fred in midfield. And Bruno Fernandes, Greenwood, Van der Beek, and then Cavani up front. Cavani's goal is 50th in European football. The difference between the two teams on the night. 3-0 to Manchester United on an aggregate, and they have it with Lindelof. Played down towards Teyers. And Teyer's controlling it, just uh, pokes it back inside his own half for Lindelof. And he, in turn, just plays it back to his goalkeeper, David De Gea, in all yellow. Turn four towards Fred. Fred controlling it, put under pressure by Herrera. And able to play it simply out towards Twanzebi. Twanzebi to De Gea, out to Fred, back for Lindelof. Manchester United playing their way out past the... Uh, a reluctant press, I think it's fair to say. Yeah. Teyas plays it forward now. Bruno Fernandes plays it back to him. And then Van der Beek and Greenwood both made runs forward. And he split the difference between the pair of them. And the ball rolls through to Rui Silva, the Granada goalkeeper. A couple of minutes gone in the second half. You would talk sport two. Manchester United won up on the night. 3-0 up on aggregate. And alongside me, Jim Pravett, is the former England striker, Dean Ashton. Well, with Donny van der Beek coming on and maybe feeling the pressure to perform, it's, it's going to be difficult in a game such as this where maybe the tempo isn't where you'd want it to be, certainly as an, as an attacker. Might have to force the issue himself. Um, but we've seen what quality he's got. He's just not been able to show it, whether it's the pressure of playing for Manchester United or whether it's just we need to give him time to settle into a, a new country. A new setting is always going to be difficult during these times and maybe we have to cut some of these players a little bit of slack. Well, he's still a young man, he's 23. He hasn't played less than five and a half hours of Premier League football, though, since his move from Ajax, where he had such a major impact. He played against United in the final of this competition back in 2017 as a teenager. I'm hoping to be able to catch the eye tonight. Lindelof has it. And he's played to his right-hand side for Axel Twanzebi into the feet of the long head Cavani and then back again to Fred. Fred to Lindelof once more. Work forward towards Bruno Fernandes, can turn in the midfield and hits an intelligent ball out towards Alex Tayers on the left-hand side. Mason Greenwood ahead of him. Comes to meet it, flicks it back off again towards Matic. Matic now to Fred. Fred almost thought about sizing up a shot, but instead has uh, played it out towards the right-hand side for Juan Bissaka. Back for Fred again. And now Fred to uh, Nemanja Matic. And United again able to make comfortable possession of this. Now a significant goal coming in in Rome. With Brobby giving Ajax a 1-0 lead on the night. 2-2 on aggregate. They still be heading out on away goals. But that's the first of the two that they need this evening. The winners of that take on seemingly Manchester United. Van der Beek sliding in has uh, caught his man Montoro. 
And it's going to be a free kick which will be taken right on the right-hand touchline. So Roman nil, Ajax one, and Brobby off the bench at half-time for Ajax to score within three minutes to give them the lead on the night. Tied up on aggregate 2-2, and it might yet be a repeat of that 2017 Europa League final at the semi-final stage. Manchester United 3-0 up on aggregate in this one with Haman playing it to his left for Hayes Vallejo. Vallejo working forward over halfway. Very neat. Crisp turn in the midfield by McKees and a nice aerial ball down towards Fulkier right in front of us. Three to try and hit as he's bending inside the area and the header into the ground straight in the hands of David De Gea. Great opportunity that they really should have made the most of. Oh, it's a great chance. It's a fantastic ball in towards the six-yard box. De Gea has to stay at home. Manchester United on the break with Van der Beek right hand side of the box Bruno Fernandes making a good run Greenwood is in there Greenwood with a header and that's straight at the goalkeeper as well so the space of 30 seconds a free header for a player at either end of the pitch and neither of them remotely close to being taken no Greenwood's a lot more difficult though than Molina at the other end Molina totally free header no real pressure on the ball got himself inside when Pazaka and just completely missed the header to be honest it clipped off his head hit Juan Pesaka and then into the hands of David De Gea whereas Green with the other end it was just a little bit too heavy for him and he couldn't quite I thought could he take it on his chest even it was almost too high for the header which is why it floated back into the hands of Rui Silva just very slightly had to break his stride it was maybe a ball's width behind him or well, ball's width behind where he wanted it to be and as a consequence it was unable to put it in Manchester United leading 1-0 have won all 19 previous European ties that they played when they've won the first leg away from home and set to continue that tonight David De Gea coming out might have thrown himself at the uh, feet of Molina instead he elected to clear the ball with his feet and didn't get too much distance on it but his uh, teammates can do the rest for him and as it's were back for De Gea he spins it out of play for a throw that will be taken by Granada midway inside the Manchester United half United leading Granada by a goal to nil here on Talk Sport 2. Arsenal against Villarreal seems a racing certainty in one semi-final. And Manchester United against either Roma or Ajax will be the other one. And we're too sure which it will be now that Ajax have taken the lead in that second leg. They're still going out at the moment, but only on away goals now. It's De Gea chips it for Tejas leaving it for Bruno Fernandes now Tejas will take on Fulquier who did really well and is applauded by his manager Diego Martinez who had the perfect view of that Fulquier just getting back in between Tejas and the ball They're able to win back possession and try and get Granada going again here's the old war horse Molina laid back to uh, Fulquier Molina's fouled and it's a free kick which Manchester United have conceded on halfway seven gone second half United leading Granada by a goal to nil. You're listening to Manchester United against Granada in the Europa League. It's live on TalkSport 2 with Music Magpie, the place to get great value refurbished phones and tech. On the night that Coventry have done their survival hopes in the championship, the world of good, with a 1-0 victory at Rotherham. Ball cleared, left-footed from the edge of the penalty area, chested down by Luis Suarez. Suarez is playing it forward through the midfield and will continue his run. McKees has done well. Left-footed ball swung inside the penalty area. Molina the target. Tejas on the penalty spot have come into a very central position to knock it away. And then as it goes out towards the far touch, there's a foul by Twan Zebi. And a free kick which will be taken on the Granada left a couple of yards in from the left-hand touch line. They've got a lot of work to do, but... They're doing their best to make a fist of it at the start of the second half. They are, and it's only been seven minutes, but Luis Suarez has shown a lot more intense sharpness in his movement to cause Manchester United problems than Soldado has in both legs, if I'm honest. And that's helped Molina then get free in the box and look to try and win the headers when the cross is coming. And Suarez, one of the targets for this free kick, which is very deep and easily claimed by David De Gea. Suarez, a player who was at Watford, he didn't play for the Hornets. A relationship, of course, between Watford and Udinese and of Italy and Granada. And the likes of Fulquier that has uh, been moved between them and Suarez as well, Colombian, who has uh, scored seven goals this season. On at half-time and he's, as Dean said, looked lively. 
Nine gone second half. Matic in possession here on Talksport 2. Back for Victor Lindelof to Nemanja Matic again. 500 games behind him now in his career and plays 150th for Manchester United recently. Back for Lindelof again. And now to his right, just rolled it into the path of Axel Twanzebi. Twanzebi glad to get some miles on the clock tonight. To Lindelof, now to Matic. Tears one of the ball into feet. Right on the left-hand touchline, Matic though drives forward and uh, just claiming that he was caught there by Herrera. Everybody stopped, Fred didn't, and Fred tried to get on the loose ball in the midfield. Granada then work it forward for Suarez to chase after. It was over here, David De Gea comes out and sweeps up. And then it's cleared by Never into Greenwood. And out of play for a throw that'll be taken on the uh, Granada left-hand side. 1-0 to United, 10 minutes gone in the second half. Yeah, just a little tactical point. Nemanja Matic obviously playing alongside Fred in front of the, the back four of Manchester United. But just when they have possession, he then drops almost in alongside Lindelof. And obviously being left-footed, he's more comfortable that side to be able to then play out for Manchester United. And it means the fullbacks can then get a little bit higher. Even though he's doing that, the intensity is still incredibly slow for Manchester United. They have it now with Bruno Fernandes played forward. He's just taking the deflection off for Vallejo, but it still finds Van der Beek. Van der Beek right-hand side of the penalty area, dropping his shoulder, doesn't get the crossing, turns back instead, finds Juan Bissaka, Van der Beek again, the Dutchman to Bruno Fernandes, his right footed ball in Cavani, just wide, threw himself at it, the header, across the face of goal, but wide of Rui Silva's post. No, nope, not many times that you score with your shoulder as a striker when you go in, and he just misses the header, it's a really clever run again from Cavani on the blind side of the centre back again not being able to see his movement he just darts in front of Haman he's not switched on he's not offside and he'll be so disappointed it's a very easy header seven or eight yards out and he just comes straight off his shoulder and wide now big moment in that Roma Ajax game where the Amsterdamers have the ball in the net again through Dusan Tadic but it's a VAR check to see if it stands. If it does, it's 2-0 Ajax, and they will go ahead on aggregate. But still waiting for ratification of the uh, decision to allow the goal. Keep you informed on that. Has, in fact, been ruled out, I'm led to believe. So still, Roma going through on away goals at the moment, but it sounds as though it's Ajax who are putting all the pressure on there. Brian Brobby's goal, the difference between the two sides on the night. Here, it's Cavani's early goal that has given United a, a lead. 3-0 up on aggregate and coasting. Ball played forward by Granada and then... Guertas, the substitute, just lost his footing inside the penalty area as it's played the too strongly for him anyway, but... He lost the battle to keep it in when he lost his footing. And it goes out of play for a goal kick that De Gea will take. 12 gone second half. Manchester United leading Granada by a goal to nil. Arsenal still three up after the very quick flurry of goals in that first half. Pepe on 18, Lacazette on 21, Saka on 24. After they had a goal disallowed prior to that by the uh, VAR. So Arsenal going through, they're fallen up on aggregate. They'll be playing Villarreal, who are 3-0 up on aggregate against Dinamo Zagreb. Suarez tries a shot from the right-hand side of the area. Antoine Zebi was there to effect the block. Daniel James is going to be coming on very shortly for Manchester United. Yeah, been impressed with the two centre-backs. Antoine Zebi, especially. Not a lot to do, but got to be switched on as he was there. With Luis Suarez looking to get the shot away, I think it was, and he just came across and blocked. Throw taken by Fulquier, worked back by Montoro, nutmegging Bruno Fernandes, and then he came back for Fulquier. He's controlled it on his chest and kicked it straight out of play. Throw which will be taken by Manchester United, and they will make the change, I think, before they restart play. James, the man that is uh, going to be coming on, and one matter. Uh, looks as though he might be getting ready as well. I don't think he's going to be coming on quite at this juncture. Just uh, comes across. There's a high five between him and James Matter. Just out warming up. Play restarts before the change is going to be made. It's Puertas. Back for Fulquier. Fulquier turning in off the touchline. Working 
The ball past Bruno Fernandes. Juan Bissaka in so strongly. It's a brilliant challenge. Now Greenwood is away. And Greenwood going up through the gears. He's leaving Montoro in his wake. Running at Vallejo. Van der Beek with the shot. And it's a fraction wide. Brilliant run from Mason Greenwood. You see when he's confident, he's happy to run at defenders, try and commit them, which he does. And then as it just falls back, I think actually Greenwood was trying to cut that back for himself. But when it did cut back to Donny van der Beek, he took the shot on straight away. He just dragged it a fraction. He was looking to drag it across the goalkeeper from the left, from the right hand side, across to the left hand inside of the post, and just dragged it a, a fraction. So United will make their change. It's their second. And Daniel James is on for Edison Cavani with uh, half an hour to go. Looks like a, a premeditated change. And I'm sure it will see Mason Greenwood moved up through the middle. Van der Beek now playing at 10. Bruno on the left. James on the right. Matic heading the ball down. Uh, loose pickings fall in the midfield for Herrera. Montoro out of Vallejo he's played it out towards the left back Neva worked back in field by Granada able to uh, venture into space Fulquier's made a great uncharted run down the uh, right hand side but Keats looked for him he only found Bruno Fernandes who's claiming a handball there by Kaman as it was uh, played forward the referee gave himself a little bit of thinking time but agrees it's a free kick to United it's going to be a yellow card as well for Kaman and the 34-year-old uh, Granada captain is the second of their players booked. Well, and rightly so. I mean, he went down with his hand up in the air as that ball was tried to play down the side of him to Greenwood from Fernandez. Just dived across, arm in the air. Rightly so, deserved the uh, the yellow card. I just keep thinking, what, why is Bruno Fernandez on the pitch? But no idea why he's still on there. No need whatsoever. Get one matter on. Give Bruno a rest. It, it, I reckon he's probably a pain in the backside, Bruno Fernandes. If you bring him off or, you know, it's not under his circumstances, you could probably throw a little paddy. Here's James playing inside the penalty area off Vallejo's head and nodded away. Anything for a quiet life, you're telling me, Dean. <laughs> but just leave him on you know he's you're gonna get a rake if you pull him off with half an hour to go so leave him on to save yourself the bother Granada bring it forward here matter is uh, warming up sure it is uh, now warming up as well well he's, he's playing on the left hand side as well so he's having to do more work defensively than going forward and just puts a little bit of pressure on Molina here but the Striker works it wide, in comes the cross, Twanzebi's headed that one away from Luis Suarez, flicked back round the corner again by uh, Granada, close to being offside as it's uh, worked out towards Never, but the flag stayed down. I mean, you, you said pressure from Bruno Fernandes, there's more pressure in my belt buckle, sitting in this position than he put on the defence, I mean, he's just, he's just jogging around, he's still out there, I think as a manager you've got to be strong minded take him off give him a rest give someone else a real opportunity one of the young the young lads give them opportunity and the Tyros uh, waiting for their chance uh, Shoratiri and Anthony Alanga as well who's scored a couple of goals in the EFL trophy this season and they've also got a young defender Will Fish it's been not the right circumstances to bring him on uh, quite yet with still half an hour to go but he is very highly regarded indeed only 18 regular captain of the under 23s uh, Neil Woods team uh, here at Old Trafford and uh, a real star of the future more than potentially be an England international of the future Will Fish and be interesting to see if he gets uh, a run out tonight at uh, any stage 27 to go and Manchester United leading Granada 1-0 with Fulkier able to play the ball forward into uh, feet of Luis Suarez good movement from him he's done well since coming on and he's uh, won a throw here off Matic which will be taken on the Granada right hand side nearer the edge of the penalty area uh, than the halfway in fact by the time Fulquier's retrieved the ball he's uh, pretty much on the edge of the penalty area as he takes the throw but Tejas can knock it away Van der Beek flicking it intelligently into space for Fred 
Fred maybe turned the wrong way in the midfield, ran into Herrera. Herrera, with a strong block challenge, wins it back, tries to turn it over the top. Tejas gets it away. Van der Beek able just to uh, drag it forward there. It was uh, pulled back by Montoro, I thought, but referee didn't agree. And play goes on as it comes uh, through the centre circle uh, back to uh, her man, her man to Vallejo. Seven Hearts just the other way round uh, at the moment with uh, Vallejo on the right and the man on the left but I think it's uh, just the way that they've ended up in this passage of play rather than a, a tactical change. James putting the pressure on on the Manchester United right the man has it and he'll uh, mop up on the edge of his own penalty area. You're listening to Manchester United against Granada. It's in the Europa League and it's live on TalkSport 2 with McDonald's McDelivery. Order McDelivery now on the Uber Eats or Just Eat app. We deliver. 1-0 with Edison Cavani's goal. An hour ago, the difference between the two teams. 65 on the clock. Tejas back defending. Just uh, pulling Puertas. Uh, physically twisted him round. Free kick. An easy decision for the officials. And <laughs> Fouquier just trying to nick five yards. Just brazenly picked up the ball from where the infringement took place. And he just rolled it forward, almost chucked it at Bruno Fernandez's feet. Bruno then saying to the officials, look, you've, you've got to make him take the free kick from roughly the right postcode. And then he is told by the referee to get out of the way and allow them to take it. So he's taken from the wrong place. It's flicked on inside the penalty end. And that on the turn, left-footed shot, and it's got a fraction wide. Didn't really get hold of it. Had to hit it first time. And the hair again would have been struggling had that one been creeping just the other side of the post. But it remains 1-0. Well, I mean, again, just maybe switched off a fraction Manchester United because the ball in was poor, really short, but it just missed everybody. And then went all the way through every single Manchester United defender to the back back post where her man just out muscled on Pazaka and turned on his left foot and saw the white netting and completely snatched at it couldn't have dragged it more wide if he'd have tried a bit harder I mean it we always say a defender's finish but defenders can finish more than amicably but that was when he just really snatched at it and try and put so much power into it that you miss kick it Puertas has it again, right hand side of the penalty area, his ball chipped, it was a poor one, Fred heads it away, Van der Beek similarly can uh, head it further clear, and Bruno Fernandes plays it back to him, Van der Beek trying to get it back into the path of the Portuguese as he made a run forward, couldn't do so, Granada quickly uh, play it forward, and Juan Zebi is shoved to the ground, stood his ground, and uh, Molina uh, has... Uh, not been conned necessarily by Twanzebi, but he felt the contact and uh, made sure that he realised, that the referee realised that uh, contact had been made. It's a foul. <laughs> he literally just shoves him in the back. Twanzebi gets there first, gets his body across nicely, and Molina just shoves him in the back. I, I don't know what they're complaining about. Are you telling me you wouldn't have complained under those same circumstances? We're footballers, we complain about absolutely there everything. Go, there you go then. <laughs> it's Manchester United bringing it forward with Matic. It was patently the right decision. Uh, Matic will just bring it inside the centre circle. And uh, he's won a free kick now. Far by Montoro. And Fred, a couple of yards inside the centre circle, will prepare to take this. And still being played at a relatively pedestrian tempo. Uh, Transebi, four towards Van der Beek. Van der Beek takes it out towards the right-hand touchline and then lays it back for wan Bissaka to Twanzebi again. We're midway through the second half on TalkSport 2 and Manchester United's safe passage through to the semi-finals has long since been assured. Matic playing it for Bruno Fernandes chasing after it has uh, been unable to stop it going out of play for a goal kick and then running down the sliding down the camber of the pitch almost ended up in the hoardings Dean describing it perfectly earlier that it's a raised plinth almost that the pitch is on here at Old Trafford and a, a good couple of foot runoff but a very steep gradient on that uh, that runoff the camber is uh, the one that has got the better of many over the years play ball by Fulquier here down towards the edge of the penalty area and he gets the return ball, playing it down for Luis Suarez. Uh, Luis Suarez with uh, a candidate for worst cross of the night. 
has uh, knocked it 30 rows back into the uh, the mural of fan spaces at the scoreboard end of the ground. 21 to go, and it's 1-0 United. I'm sure with their black kit, they'll blame the the uh, the hoardings, the top hauling. <laughs> but he wasn't quite sure. He saw a saw a teammate behind the goal. Yeah, if you're not aware of that story, the uh, uh, the, the hoardings around the lower tier were red. Uh, until uh, a week or so ago they were changed for the United against racism campaign they are now black and the, the decision has been made to keep them that way uh, because the well, complaints from the Manchester United players it was difficult to pick out a pass because they would just see a sea of red and the shirts were blending in so they are now black so Granada playing in black tonight possibly disadvantaged by that this ball is uh, played inside the penalty area her man sliding in has uh, diverted it Half away, James and Green combine, then Matic fights Fred. Fred with a touch that uh, wasn't his most convincing. He uh, tried to get it away from Montoro. Conceded a free kick, which has been taken instantly and played out towards Never on the left hand side for Granada. But no sign of the first goal that they need, let alone goals two and three, if they're going to be able to eliminate Manchester United tonight. And we're 20 minutes away from Manchester United booking the safe passage through to the uh, semi-finals where as things stand they will be playing Roma still Ajax leading 1-0 against Roma but going out on away goals as things stand at the moment in that game Ajax dominating 73% of the possession they've had tonight in that game and twice as many attempts as their opponents but they can't find the way through for the second goal that they need one matter is going to be coming on in a moment um, Victor Diaz uh, will be introduced for Granada, the fullback. His full PA who may well be the man to come off. Back he comes through the midfield for Granada inside the centre circle. It's uh, an elevated pass from Montoro, brought down on the chest of Never over on the far touchline. Jim Pravin and Dean Ashton talking through the action from Old Trafford uh, tonight. Declan McCarthy, our in stadium producer here on Talk Sport 2. And Roma have just equalised at home to Ajax. Roma won. Ajax won. Doesn't really change too much as far as Ajax are concerned. They know that they needed to score. They uh, score from here. They get into extra time. Here's an effort from distance, which came in from Herrera for Granada. It's blocked, and then Bruno Fernandez uh, just involved with her man off the ball. He's uh, ended up on the deck. Play goes on. Now worked for by Greenwood down the line for Van der Beek's run. Van der Beek playing a, a cleverly disguised ball down the inside left channel for James. James controlling it, plays it back for Alex Teas. Back from him to Matic. Matic. Square through the centre circle to Anzebi to Bruno Fernandez. Slowed down to walking pace again. Down towards Tears once more. Just deposits the ball at the feet of James and just trots off languidly towards the edge of the penalty area. Bruno Fernandez plays it back to him. Now to Matic. Matic 15 yards outside the box into the feet of Fred. Fred to Bruno Fernandez. Fernandez turning and uh, he was caught this time. It's a free kick to Manchester United. About three yards in from the left hand touchline after the foul by Montoro. And United will make the change. And Mata surely for Fernandez. Yes, that is the change that's being made. Green 8 and a red 18 on the board of the fourth official. And Manchester United will see Juan Mata coming on. Man has won this competition twice, four years ago and eight years ago. So is he due? He's going to get the captain's armband. Bruno Fernandez will uh, give it to Juan Mata on his way off the field, and Victor Diaz will come on at this same juncture for Granada. Is Dean Ashton? Well, maybe with, uh, with just over 17 minutes to go, that's a happy medium. Bruno Fernandes having to come off on one matter getting a, a run out I thought it would have been a, a good game for him to start this evening with his experience and ability to keep possession neat and tidy but he's on now with what is an ever slowing game and Granada just haven't been able to get any sort of tempo into the game whatsoever they've almost been lulled into the same speed of game as Manchester United dare I say they have the tempo of a Ford Granada from 1974 <laughs> uh, it's uh, been slow and ponderous now two yellow cards have been shown there by the referee Fred has been brought down he just got caught by Herrera 
and the black-shirted Granada players very quickly surrounding the referee weren't at all happy Soldado you remember got a yellow card for descent in the first half I think two further yellow cards were brandished there uh, for descent Granada are going to make the change the left back never coming off and Victor Diaz is on to replace him uh, rather than the uh, the right back Fouquier he did play left back at Mulder last month Victor Diaz he's uh, played right back in the last two league games it'll be interesting to see which side he's playing and imagine the left with Fouquier staying on the right Fred still down receiving treatment Van der Beek has just been over towards the, uh, the Manchester United technical area and uh, just exchanging a, a few thoughts with Mike Thielen and Van der Beek's uh, making his way forward again Pogba a uh, sort of threat I beg your pardon back on his feet and is uh, okay just making his way towards the edge of the penalty area and United shaping up this uh, free kick an opportunity to put further daylight between themselves and their Spanish opponents yeah Tellez will be the man to take it just kisses the ball sets it down very deliberate walk away still waiting for his first Manchester United goal and he still is but is it going to be taken again and the referee has spotted an infringement and the United players are, are mystified as to what happened he struck it and as soon as he struck it uh, the whistle blew I think he must have been saying that United's supplementary wall was too close to Granada's wall and then that's why he's given an indirect free kick Granada's way I think they were just too involved in terms of having a little wrestle with the Granada players in that in that separate wall that they made and it seemed like the referee was very happy to blow that whistle as quick as possible probably to defuse the whole situation in which he brandished two yellow cards Tejas heads the ball away and he goes out for a throw which will be taken by uh, Fulquier Roma 1, Ajax 1 3-2 on aggregate to the Romans Manchester United leading Granada 1-0 3-0 up on aggregate they're going through Arsenal live over on TalkSport right now 3-0 up way to Slavia Prague three goals in six minutes and they had the ball in the net four times in nine minutes the first one being disallowed because of VAR so Arsenal going through 4-1 up on aggregate and VAR 2-1 up against Dinamo Zagreb now uh, but still 3-1 up on aggregate the Croatians still with plenty of work to do although they've uh, just thrown themselves a lifeline recently here's Puertas touch from him finding Fulquier Fulquier back through the uh, midfield towards the halfway line left footed it's uh, just curved inside the centre circle McKees will play it out to uh, Victor Diaz the substitute playing at left back and now he finds Vallejo Vallejo and uh, Herman have Swap for, swapped sides of the centre-half partnership again Fulquier with a high ball inside the penalty area Puertas attacking it bounces away from him and Juan Bissaka sent up on the edge of the penalty area Maquise trying to get himself into a shooting position takes on Juan Bissaka left footed ball clipped in but De Gea was there first came across the run of Molina and got good strong safe hands to it to be able to assage the threat 13 minutes to go Manchester United 1 Granada 0 Granada needing 3 in those last 13 minutes without reply to go through and knock Manchester United out just every single time they have maybe half an opening as they did there it's then that little lack of quality whether it's the final pass whether it's the, the finish at the end of it which there's not been many it's been all too easy for Manchester United and all too easy for Arsenal by the sound of it who have a fourth now Alex Lacazette has got goals two and four for them tonight Slavia Prague nil Arsenal four and they're five one up on aggregate such a difficult side to read I know you and I both thought they would go through tonight but such a difficult side to to read and I think too many would have anticipated that scoreline and credit to Mikel Arteta and his man 12 to go in this one uh, this is the kind of scoreline I think many anticipated with Manchester United courtesy of that early goal with a an unassailable platform that they've never looked like surrendering and have uh, just been going through the motions really just getting the job done and not a game ticked off with Roma seemingly lying ahead in the semi-finals in a fortnight's time ball work by Tejas down the line for James he's offside made a curving run but just made it too early 
and it's a free kick which Granada will take just outside their own penalty area. The pain lip service at uh, uh, being urgent, but it is only that. You know that they're going to make a double change in a moment. Ahmad and Williams are the uh, two players who are going to be coming on. Great experience for them. First European quarterfinals of their career. Bruce Silva playing it out from the back. Exchanging passes with Vallejo. Granada have uh, long since known that this one was all over by the shouting. Matter cushioning it into the path of Van der Beek. Back for one matter again. He saw Greenwood in the middle but couldn't quite find him. And it's uh, cleared. And then headed away by Puertas. And then worked forward. But Lindelof just steps forward and gets out here Luis Suarez to be able to play it out towards Alex Tejas. 11 to go, 1-0 to Manchester United, Van der Beek stumbling on the edge of the box, Greenwood has it, left-footed ball clipped in from him, couldn't find Mata, half cleared, won back well by Matic, just uh, heading it into his own path, as he broke forward and then winning a throw, which will be taken on the Manchester United left, and United with the opportunity to uh, make this double change with 10 minutes to go, Dean Ashton. Yeah, obviously just winding down the clock, give these young players a... Like you say, a taste of a, of a quarter-final in the European competition. But, like you said, even when they look to attack, it's not with any real intensity, is it? It's if it opens up great. If it doesn't, we're really not going to push it. And it's hard to argue with the way Manchester United have played because they're going to come away from this. No real need for the ice baths, I wouldn't have thought been a stroll not dissimilar I suppose in many ways to the round of 32 against Real Sociedad of which more in a moment because Greenwood's got it inside the area Van der Beek waiting for the pullback which wasn't forthcoming cleared only as far as Juan Bissaka outside the penalty area on the Manchester United right the uh, double change hasn't been made yet incidentally Fred back for Matic Matic's left footed ball clipped down towards Tejas who controls it on the corner of the box back from him into the uh, feet of James Van der Beek looked to supply him with the return ball James wasn't at all sure where it had bounced after it came off one of the Granada defenders and was uh, turning and looking the wrong way for a moment Granada able to clear it with Fulquier and then winning the second ball in the midfield now with Puertas He's been challenged by Alex Tejas. That's a free kick. And uh, the opportunity for both sides to make further changes. And Nehuen Perez is going to be coming on. Argentinian centre-half. He's on loan from Atletico Madrid. He has a feature for the last month or so. He'll be coming on for Granada. Uh, but the first United change will see Greenwood off and Ahmad on. He's already written his own part in this uh, European run with the goal in the first leg against Milan coming off the bench and it was a fantastic cameo that night and Williams coming on here for Juan Bissaka I think Tejas is making his way he saw that Williams was going to come on and was uh, saying immediately well surely it's going to be me that's coming off and Williams is a good player a good young player I don't think he's quite good enough to play both full back positions at once which is uh, how Tejas saw it he was convinced that uh, he saw Williams about to come on that he would be the man coming off and she his final change so we're not going to see Shuratiri or Ilanga tonight shame it's a shame isn't it you, you sort of think well it is a great opportunity to just give them that little bit of experience especially especially Fish with you know so many with the uh, Maguire and and also Shaw out just to maybe give him a little taste yep no no taste of fish tonight <laughs> here's uh, Puertas oh dear playing it back for Fulquier you set them up mate <laughs> <laughs> I'll smash them in here's uh, on the edge of the area Rui Silva cleared out towards the the left hand side Williams has come on at right back and uh He's just let the ball uh, run past him. And he goes through to David De Gea. And play it out. To Victor Lindelof, just outside the uh, penalty area. Seven minutes to go. Manchester United leading Granada by a golden hill. Williams playing it back again for uh, Axel Twanzebi. Twanzebi back for David De Gea once more. Still 1-1 in that roma Ajax game. So it will be Roma that United face as things stand at the moment. But an Ajax goal takes you to extra time there. Matic back.
battling, losing out Molina, left hand side of the penalty area, flashed across the edge of the six yard box, a cross which was brisk, but evaded everybody, and Tez in the end did well to get out of the way of it, and it goes out for a throw, which will be taken by Manchester United in the left back position. We think back to that round of 32 tie, all the hard work done in Spain, a 4-0 victory out there, came back here, and it was a, a, a very forgettable goalless draw, but the job was done. Manchester United haven't got a great record in two-legged ties against Spanish sides. It is a losing record, but it has improved over the course of this run from uh, six and nine to eight and nine. We will have done after tonight anyway. Well, I mean, if you you know you think back to Sir Alex Ferguson, who's just down there to the left-hand side at this game. You think back to European nights under his management. There were certain games like this where you've already done the job you had a long campaign it's just about getting through without any hiccups any injuries and they've managed to do that yeah this will be providing they uh, they hold on to the the win tonight only united's second home win against spanish opposition in 11 attempts the last one coming eight saucy that back in 2013 Granada with only their second corner of the night, but that's two more than Manchester United. It's volleyed in and then away, or volleyed away, should I say, by Juan Mata after the delivery which came in from Montoro. And then Mata comes across to block the subsequent cross and goes out of play for a throw down by the corner flag, uh, which Montoro is going to take. He's got the captain's armband now. Left footed ball, clipped inside the box, headed away easily by Matic, right footed shot from Victor Diaz, he struck it so sweetly, but diving to his right hand side, David De Gea can make still a relatively comfortable save. Well, oh, I just sat up beautifully, didn't it? Two or three bounces, as one matter looks to spread the play. And does so beautifully to find James. And now James running towards the edge of the penalty area, able to play it in, little flick back by Ahmad. Good awareness of what was around him, but he just couldn't quite get the angle right. And Granada again are able to clear. Four towards uh, Luis Suarez, who's seen, led the line very willingly since coming on to replace Soldado. And he goes out of play for a throw, which will be taken on the uh, Granada right. Yeah, just, just going back to that Diaz opportunity on the edge of the box. They're so nice when they come bouncing across and you can wait to try and hit it on the half volley. He actually hit it into the ground which then fizzed it up towards David De Gea at waist height. It's very comfortable though. Yeah, he's not a, a regular goal scorer, Victor Diaz. It's the four in that's part of 140 games for Granada. He's taking a throw very quickly here. Williams has done well, defends and gets it away from Machis. Here's Montoro inside his own half. Guiding it away from Van der Beek. 1 0 to Manchester United with three minutes of normal time remaining. A 3 0 aggregate lead. Arsenal also going through. And as things stand, they'll be playing Villarreal and United will be playing Roma. United's first leg of the semi final will be here at Old Trafford. They'll be home first and away in the second leg. Fortnight tonight and three weeks tonight, respectively. Here's David De Gea. Ball that he's feet inside the uh, penalty area. Uh, just waiting for players to uh, push up field and uh, some animation on the Granada bench away to our left hand side quite work out what uh, that was in aid of no, it was like a round of applause wasn't it that went right from the uh, the dugout all the way up into the stands just to our left don't know whether it was a uh, 87 minutes on the clock, I don't know if there's any significance of the time perhaps, I don't know, I don't know, but it was uh, rapturous applause, with nothing on the field to, su to uh, suggest it was earned, truth be told, the throw which will be taken by Granada, not too far adrift of the edge of the penalty area, they have actually had the majority of attempts tonight, 10 to 9, but... Manchester United have been uh, in complete control, even if they've only had one attempt on target since Edison Cavani's goal. Well, there's another corner for Granada. They've had the monopoly on those tonight. It's a high bouncing ball inside the penalty area. Tennis tried to clear it with his left foot, and all he's done is loop it over his own bar and out of play for a corner. 
which will be taken over on the Granada left-hand side. Their third corner of the night without reply. Marquis to take it. Molina making a darting run in towards the near post. United defending with fives only inside the six-yard box, and one of them trying to set heads it away. Brought back down by Montoro. Right footed ball clicks inside the penalty area. Transebi's head ahead. That one clear. And then Ahmad flicks it back for Van der Beek. And the counter attack is on. And here's Ahmad with the pace. Is he going to be able to get there? Good strength. Keeps the ball in his stride. Still Ahmad goes. And it was one cleanly from him in the eyes of the referee. About five yards outside the penalty area by Victor Diaz. Well, I think he, he just lacked awareness to exactly where the defenders were because I think someone with maybe more experience would have cut across the defenders to commit them. In the end, he just allowed himself to be maybe muscled out. Here comes across at the other end, and it's a great save! David De Gea diving away to his left-hand side. And he's denied Herrera an equalising goal on the night. And now Manchester United can break quickly again with Van der Beek. Almost in stoppage time. Juan Mata's got it. Inside the penalty area. Back outside the box again. Onto his left foot. Sees the Tears is making his way forward from left back. Rolls it into his path. Time to measure the cross. And it's deflected in for an own goal. And Manchester United have their second. Mata at the heart of it. Continued his run inside the penalty area. Tears delivered it. But Mata, who was the target, missed it. And it hit Vallejo and goes in. Manchester United leads. 2-0 on the night, 4-0 on aggregate, and as we go into stoppage time, they know that they're in the semi-finals to play either Roma or Ajax. Oh, they don't deserve that, Granada, Vallejo, so unlucky, I mean, it's a delicious ball in from Alex Tejas on that left-hand side, it was one matter that played it out, and they didn't wait there, he made a good run into the box, and he completely <laughs> misses his header, poor old Jesus Vallejo, behind him, knows nothing about it, hits him clean on the forehead and past Rui Silva so unfortunate especially after having that chance at the other end where David De Gea made a great save from Luis Suarez yeah moments after it could have been 1-1 it is 2-0 to Manchester United and Vallejo unwittingly turning it past his own goalkeeper we're into three minutes of added time and we played the first of them already and now the offside flag is up but worryingly for United Victor Lindelof's gone down and he made his run back trying to stay with the uh, two Granada players who were breaking forward and he just went down as he'd just been caught on the, the top of the ankle there maybe uh, but uh, Toe he's going to be able to continue without the knee for treatment Toe just got trod on the uh, trod on the toe by Luis Suarez totally accidental but with these flimsy boots that they now wear painful there's no uh, there's no thick treaded predators anymore here is Mata now Matic and Ahmad chasing with Fulquier we got it back to his goalkeeper so Granada back in league action at the weekend at home to Ibar as they hope to uh, consolidate their position in the top half of the league table the best finish last season seventh their best finish since the 1970s and still a chance to replicate that and get themselves into Europe next season although it's looking a tad unlikely Arsenal are through they've beaten Slavia Prague tonight by four goals to nil 5-1 on aggregate Pepe two for Lacazette and Saka the goal scorers Manchester United heading through as well it will be Roma that they face seemingly they're deep in stoppage time in that game Roma 1 Ajax 1 it remains Ajax have to score to take it to extra time otherwise Roma will be going through here's Matic Matic riding the challenge in the midfield able to play it forward towards Van der Beek and this could be the last passage of play of the game Van der Beek bringing it forward to his left hand side was Ahmad and he couldn't quite thread it through goes through to the goalkeeper Rui Silva referee has a look at his watch and signals the end of the game and with it the end of Granada's maiden European campaign a quarter final probably realistically beyond their wildest dreams but Manchester United have eyes on winning the trophy itself they're through to the semi-finals the last four of cup competitions has been their nemesis over the last 12-14 months or so but they've got another crack now when they will take on Roma 
in the last four of the Europa League and Gdansk gets that little bit closer. Manchester United 2, Granada 0, 4-0 on aggregate.